Hello, here I am showing you a little bit about the wizardry of how I'm using Google Sheets to set up my gradebook. All right, so here's an example of what my gradebook was going to look like for trimester three. So I've got a spreadsheet. In these first three columns, I've got the class, the student name, first and last. And one important thing to keep in mind is that you can't change the sorting on this sheet. And it'll, it'll be clear why later. So whenever you're putting in the student names, just make sure that you have a consistent system that you can live with for the rest of the trimester or whatever the timing is. So. My first three columns are the student names. And then so that I can always know what the students' names are, I like to freeze these first columns. So I'm going to say, so I'm in column C. I want to say view freeze up to current column. So now these first three columns are all frozen so that now when I scroll sideways, the student names are always going to be on my screen. I always know whose grade I'm doing. Um, then the next one would be to make sure that I always see the titles. I always want to see the tops of my rows. Um, my assignment name. So going horizontally, each of the columns is a, an assignment name. So I've got my assignments are numbered based on kind of a system for grade six is the grade level, three means it's trimester three, and the number after that is what number assignment. So it's six, three, zero, one, six, three, zero, two. So the numbers count up all the way across. And then I have a kind of a description that goes with that assignment. But same thing, I want to make sure that I freeze those top two column, I'm sorry, top two rows. Because now when I scroll down through my class list, I can still, I always know which assignment I'm talking about. So those are good tools to make help you stay organized. Um, the next would be that this spreadsheet, if I scroll down, now I'm way down here. I've lost all my, my student data is way up at the top. So I recommend, what I do is I delete all these extra rows. Like Google gives you a thousand rows to be in. So I'm going to click on the 70, scroll all the way to the bottom, hold down the shift key and click on that a thousand. Right click and delete all those rows. So now my spreadsheet, if I scroll down to the bottom, there is a bottom stopper. It's not way too big. Um, and the last part of setting up this spreadsheet, this grade book, is to put in my conditional formatting. So I like to click on the first cell, go all the way to the very end, the whole corner. Um, and then when you right click, you can say conditional formatting. It's also under format. So now I want to set up a format when I'm doing the grades. So let's say if the text contains the word exceeds or whatever you determine for your grade, then you can change the color. So then I want it to come up as blue. One awesome trick to know if you're going to be doing a lot of conditional formatting, don't say done after each one. Just say add another rule. And it will remember the range you're using. It'll remember what kind of stipulation doing text contains, and then you can just change it again. So now I want it that says proficient, and then this time I want it to be green. Add another rule. If it contains minor fix, then I want it to go with yellow. If it contains major fix, it goes to orange. Add another rule. And if it says missing, then it goes to red. So those are my basic categories. So now I say done. So now I can tell that this whole space where all my grades are is going to have these criteria. So if I go here and type proficient, I spell it correctly, then immediately it turns green. So that way as I'm grading things, I can go through and say, oh, there we go. All these students are proficient. Oops, this one's a minor fix. Then I know, oh, that's a yellow. It stands out to me. I can tell that that's someone who needs to fix it. So that's part of just in the grading when I'm filling it in. You can also do this with scores. You can always, when you're adding rules, you can say if it's between, it's greater than. You can set up good criteria to help you figure out what your scoring is. Um, and then have colors to help you visually see it. So that's the main setup of the original grade sheet on these scores. Uh, one other thing to consider is that if you're going to be linking this grade sheet with student sheets, you want to add more additional sheets. So I want to show the students their grades. I'm showing them their journals. Um, if you have any other things, so I want to give them a page that says feedback. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new sheet, add a new sheet, and I'll go ahead and copy these first three columns. I just want them to be the same. And there we go. But now the trick is, I don't want to have to, if I change one of my assignment names, I don't want to have to go back and change it on every other sheet. So the helpful thing, how do I make sure that this information automatically fills in on this next sheet, which I'm going to rename feedback. What I do is I use what's called array formula. So I say equals array formula. And I remember that you can click on it. And then I want to take the data from the original sheet. So that's the page called grades. Exclamation point because I want to get that whole section. So D1 through Z2. So this whole thing that's orange, everything that's orange, any assignment title I give, I want to make sure that that gets filled in. And I hit enter. So now over here, all those, those assignment names are going to automatically fill into my next sheet. So let me, just because I'll make sure, freeze my top two rows. 
And same thing. So having consistent formatting between the different pages is also very useful for your sanity. Okay, so now, for example, if I go back to my grade sheet and I call this 6307, I want to call that earthquakes. Now when I go over to my feedback page, it automatically fills it in. So array formula is really useful for copying data between different pages in a spreadsheet. So when you're getting this set up, think about what other data you want to get from students or share with them. If you want to share goals, do you want to share you got feedback, you want to have the student feedback back to you, whatever you might want to have, create a different page for every single kind of data point that you want to share with the student and get back to you. All right, so that's the general overview of the structure of my master gradebook. And then next I'll show you how you can get this to link to the student page.